Hi everyone, welcome to this session. We'll be working on project 3. I've already signed in to the diary.io platform and and I have the project 3 open here, which is a simple to do application on main web stack, which will be hosting in the AWS cloud. Uh, um, a run through of the documentation we need to set up an EC3 instance which we serve which we serve as our server then we'll configure the back end and also do the front end configuration so to spin up the server we'll go to the AWS console I've signed in already we'll click on EC2 which will take us to the EC2 dashboard my internet is a little bit slow internet connection is a little bit slow so from the ec2 dashboard you click on launch instance Okay, I need to do this again. Launch instance. Okay, so I'll filter through the free tier only option here and scroll to Ubuntu Server 20.04 and select this AMI. So I'll be running the Linux OX from that AMI. The next step is to choose an instance type. I'll be going with the T2 Micro, which is free tier eligible. Click. Um, I need only one instance for this project. So if we need more than one, we choose more than one. For my subnet, I want my subnet to be in the US East 1A and leave every other setting at default so we'll click to add storage I'm okay with the given storage this is this is just for develop for development not for production so the 8 gig is okay we'll add tag and then tag I have the key to be name and the value to be the project we're working on and the stack. You're free to use any other value. This is just for identification purpose and for further uh, management. So here um, we can either choose to create a new security group or choose a, or select from an existing security group but then i'll just choose a new security group and name it project three here we have the ssh protocol open already on port 23 on port 22 sorry and you can have an inbound access from anywhere from the on the internet i'll quickly add the http protocol also since we want to access the application uh, from our web browser so review here we can choose to review and make last minute corrections then I click on launch I have an existing key pair so I'll choose this we can decide to create a new one also then click on launch instance
So the east, the instance is in the, the initiation stage. Initialize is coming up now. Is in the in, currently independent state. So we need to wait for this to to come up and be yeah. So we have it running now. So let's go back to our documentation and see what's the next thing to do. So we have it set up. So the next thing is to uh, connect remotely to the server and perform all the configurations that we need to perform. So for this project, I'm using a Windows system. So I'll be using the mobile X time to connect remotely um, through the SSH to, to create an SSH session and connect to the to the server so i have my over the mobile extra running here so i'll just go back to the ec2 instance and grab the public ip address of the ec2 instance select the ec2 instance you can click on connect to see other options for um, if you're using a Mac OS or a Linux based system. Alright, so we'll go back to the instance and grab the public IP address. And create a new session. Based in the public IP address, specify the username since we have an Ubuntu distribution running, we have the username to be Ubuntu. Then we connect the key pair. So this is the security credentials that will grant us access into the server, which we establish. A remote connection into the server so we have it authenticating the server and yes we're in so we can decide to clear screen and just check all right so let's go back to the to the documentation we have this established already all right so we we'll begin the backend configuration by updating the Ubuntu OS. We'll do sudo apt sudo apt update. This will fetch the dependencies and do the installation. We are also to do the app of um, the Ubuntu OS upgrade. So I'd like you to know that either the upgrade or the update will give us an update of the of the operating system we're working on to the latest version only that one we update and keep the previous version while the second will update and keep only the recent version and delete delete the previous versions Let's wait while this process is being done.
so this process could actually be faster than this and could also be slower depending on the the, the signal strength of your internet connection so the next thing is to get is to get the location of the node.js software from the ubuntu repository all right so let's clear the things a little so back to our documentation we need to install the node.js on the server we'll install the node.js on the server then we'll verify our installation by checking um, that it is installed. So all we need to do is just to check the version of the node and the NPM that we're installing. So while we do this, we'll, we'll install the Node.js. This will equally install the Node Package Manager, that's the NPM. Passing the dash Y option. To select yes. Where it is needed. Alright. So the command that we just ran. We install both Node.js. And the NPM. So know that the NPM is a package manager for, for Node. Just like we have apt for Ubuntu. And we have Yum for Red Hat and others so this is done so let's confirm our installation confirm our installation all right so we have the node install let's confirm installation for npm also all right so we have that installed so back to the documentation the next step is to prepare the application code setup. So here we are required to create a new directory for our project. We'll create a new directory for the project. Then we will change our direct, we'll move into the new directory and use the npm init command to initialize the project so let's take it one after the other so we'll make directory and name the directory to do let's confirm this okay so it's created so we have to cd into to do and while in to do while in to do we have to initiate This. So this will create um, the node package, the package the JSON file, a new file in our to-do directory. All right. Okay. So um, we have this to be okay. So we can just press enter to choose default. We can give it a description. We are creating. A to do application. Yes, the entry point is index.js. We'll create this file later. Um, can leave these at default. We're not pulling from a git from a git repository. The keyword is to do and application. The author is Larry the IO. Okay. All right. Very good. So we select yes to confirm. 
so let's just do ls to confirm that we have the package the json file created and that we've done so let's check on documentation for the next step all right so we've accomplished this so the next step is to install express the express js so remember that express is a framework of node.js therefore a lot of things developer will have programmed is already taken care of out of the box therefore it simplifies development and abstract a lot of low level details for example express helps to define routes of application based on http methods and urls so we need to do the following we need to install express using the npm remember we installed npm and we said the npm will allow us to install node.js uh, modules packages and depend manage dependencies so we install express then we create the index.js file remember while we're setting up we specify that index.js file will be our entry point okay so let's clear things up and npm install i have double m here npm install we're installing express so it's fetching the data we have it installed now it's fast so we'll create the index.js file Okay, so we have it created index.js. All right, so the next thing to do is to install the dot env module. So we use npm also. So now we need to open up the index.js file and populate it. So we'll go back to so where to type this code into the index.js file and save it. So we we'll just copy and paste this since we've been provided with the code copy carefully and paste all right so i have it written and saved um like to clear just to confirm the content okay so we need to notice that we that we have specified to use port 5000 in the code which is here we specify here that we're using port 5000 for the for the application to run on so this will be required when we want to open it in the browser so let me 
we clear this up a little. So now let's start our server to see if it works. So we'll do node index.js. Okay, so our server is up and running, but we can't access it yet from the browser. We need to go open up port 5000. So we do that from the security group. We we'll still have our project three server selected. So we'll go to the security, the security stuff here. We'll go to the security group and allow an inbound set an inbound rule to allow traffic in to the server. through ports the the tcp port the t, sorry the tcp protocol on port 5000 from anywhere so do 0, .0, .0. just for us to know we are opening Port five thousand four. We get three. Then we we'll save this rule. Now that the rule is saved, let's see if we can access our server over the internet. But first, we need to get. Let's grab the the public IP address of our server or the public DNS we'll be able to use one of the two let me just go back to instances here instances I have that copied already yeah we have a server up and running you're welcome to express going back to the documentation We've done all of this, we've done this, we have it running, and this. All right, so the next thing to do is to create the routes. So there are three actions that are to do application needs to be able to do, create a new tax display the list of all the tags that have been created and delete a completed tax. So each tax will be associated with some particular endpoints and we use different standard HTTP request method. So we have the post for creating a new tags. We have the get for displaying all the tags um, that have been created and the delete to delete or remove completed tags so for each of the tags we need to create routes that will define various endpoints that the to do app will depend on so let us create a folder called route so we'll create a folder we'll we'll move into the folder and create a new file in the folder which is um, the file that will be holding our APIs, which is name, which is to be named API.js. All right. 
Um, so I don't want to stop this. I'll just open another window to initiate a new to initiate a new SSH session. Okay, so we change directory. All right, so remember we are to create a new directory, seed into the new directory, and create a new file API dot js so we'll make make directory routes and cd into routes okay So the next thing is to create a file, a blank file, api.js. So that is done. So let's open up the file with our Vim text editor and populate the file. So we've been provided the codes in the documentation. So all we need to do is copy the code and paste into the api.js file. This is saved. Just to check. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the documentation to see the next step. So we have models. Um, now comes to the interesting part. Since the app is going to make use of MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. We need to create a model. The model is um, at the heart of the JavaScript-based application, and it's, it is what makes it interactive. All right. So we we'll also use models to define the database schema. This is important so that we will be able to define the fields stored in each MongoDB document. All right, so to create a schema and a model, we need to install the Mongoose, which is, we install Mongoose, which is a Node.js package that makes working with MongoDB easier. All right, so what do we need to do here? We need to go back, is, we need to take a step back um, in the directory to go back to the to-do folder. Then we install MongoDB. Mongos, sorry, we we'll install Mongos. All right, so let's go back a step. We're sure that we need to do. Um, yes, so this is where we are. 
then we install the npm um, sorry we install the mongoose using the npm command so this installation is done what we need to do next is to create um, a new folder we call it models and we'll seed into that folder and create a file to do.js all right so let's make a new directory models seed into models seed into models and touch to do the JS okay let's confirm all right so we have that so now that we have that done Let's open up the file that we just created. It's a blank file. So we're going to populate it. Um, let's get the code. The code has been provided also. So all we need to do is copy and paste and save the file afterwards okay so this is done So now we need to update our routes from the api.js um, file in the routes directory to make use of the new model, the new model we just created. So we are to go into the route directory, open the api.js file, delete the code inside and paste there the code, the code, this, this one here. This is the new code that will replace um, the code there. So let's go back to uh, so CD to routes. Okay. So, try to make things. Uh, so, Vim API.js. So, we have that played out let's copy the new code okay escape full column right quit we have it saved just to confirm yeah okay so we have that cited so 
Okay, so let's return to our documentation. The next step is to set up the MongoDB database. We need a database where we will sort out where we will store our data. For this, we'll make use of the MLab. MLab provides MongoDB database as a service solution. So to make so to make life easy, you will need to sign up for a shared cluster free account which is ideal for our use case so you can sign up follow the sign up process select aws as the cloud provider and choose a region near you so we need to complete we we'll complete a get started checklist as shown in the image below um, what else do we need to note we need to allow the mongodb database um, access to the mongodb database from anywhere Note that this is not secure, but it is ideal for testing purposes. So important also to note um, that we we'll make sure you change the time of deleting the entry from six hours to one week. All right. So we we'll create the database, um, create database and collections, and okay. So now let's go on to the mongodb database platform i've already signed in i've created an account so the first step is to create is to build a cluster so we need to create a cluster um so I'll click on view the cost cluster here we have multiple options to choose from but it is recommended for this project to to start uh, with a free tier okay so since our server we are hosting our server with the um, the cloud provider of aws so we choose AWS, you select the region, um, naturally within the um, North Virginia region. Um, we have other options here to choose from. And we create on, we click on create cluster. We have the cluster name to be cluster O. Cluster zero, sorry. So the cluster is being created. So know that new clusters take between one to three minutes to provision. Okay, I think they could be taking longer also due to the poor signal strength of my internet connection. So I just pause the video and continue when it is created. Okay, now that the cluster has been created will need to add a new database user so you click on database database access all right we'll add add a new user okay 
we choose the password uh, authentication method add a new user let's name the user of um, Larry Larry IO now just choose a simple password okay database user privilege read write in any database Using the temporary user, enable to specify the resources that this user by default. All resources in this project project are accessible. Okay, so this looks okay by me. The password is too weak. Mm. Okay. Let me just do auto generate. Auto generate a secure password. Now copy, copy the password. So we're adding the user. The user has been added already. So next is to allow API access list. And with that, we will select allow access from anywhere. So add an and sorry IP access list not API sorry so we're configuring the IP addresses here click to add the IP address that will be allowed so select allow from anywhere and And click on confirm so allowing access to your database from anywhere is not recommended for production database but since it's, this is just for development and testing we can do this usually you to restrict it to um, specified addresses so this is still in pending state okay so creating and configuring the IP addresses which can assess the cluster so we add the IP address and allow access from anywhere you know, to change this to one week uh, note that this particular configuration is not um, is not advised for production database but since this is testing and development so we can just allow access from anywhere so we click on, on this this is creating still in dependent state okay so our network configuration is active so we'll go back to cluster here we will create a mongodb database and collection so we click on collections
here we are click on add my own data give it a db name and uh, the collection name and click on create Okay, so let's go back to the documentation to check our progress. So this has been done. This has been done. All right. So in the index.js file, we specified process dots um, env to access environment variables but we have not created this file we've not created the dots um, uh, environment variables file so we need to do that now so to do that we'll go back to our terminal we'll go back to the terminal uh, well this is still active Okay. So we're re re-establishing connection to to the server. The connection time that's why we we're setting up our database. Right. So we see the two to do. And here, we'll create the file the env. We open up the file. And in the file, we are to add the connection string, add the connection string to access the database in it, just as below. So we to follow this format in updating the file. Ensure to update the username, the password. the network access and the database according to your setup all right so I remember I saved the password somewhere here then and the username but I remember was IO. So let's grab this sample. Okay. And the database. So it was diary. The database then was um, diary DB. Diary DB. So how do we assess the network address? So we'll go to cluster. Let's go back to the overview.
Sorry, I refresh the page. Okay, so refreshing the page under the <clears throat> the clusters. Click on connect. From here, we connect to application. And So, since it's a Node.js application we're working on, we leave the driver at Node.js and we, we copy this. Copy these and edit it. This is the username. And the password. That's the network address. And the name of the database. this into the dot env file save okay all right so now we need to update the index.js file to reflect the use of the .env file so that Node.js can connect to the database. Simply deleting, sim simply delete existing content in the file and update it with the entire code below. All right. So. Think okay, so it's here. On the index that just file. So all we need to do is delete the existing file. That's the existing content in the file, and replace it with the code being provided us here. Okay, so going back to the documentation, we have the idea that using environment variable to store information is considered more secure and best practice to separate configuration and secret data from the application. So instead of writing 
um, connection strings directly in the index.js application file you know we save it in the uh, the ea.env file which is a hidden document and pass the connection string so you can start your server so let's use this other window to start our server So let's find out what the error could be. Mm, since we, we have an error here, so running a quick Google search, um, actually pause the video to do the search so that we won't have the, the video to be too long. So I came across, I came across this solution and I think we should give it a try. How to kill server when seen and use and um, address already in use, which is the error we're having here. All right, so this this person is suggesting that okay, the problem just to have a background when trying to restart a node application, the process the previous one did not shut down properly, and you may see this error so uh, the solution here is to kill the process and start it all over again all right so in order to resolve it you need to kill the process manually in order to do that you need to find the process id of the process you know the process is occupying a particular port on your machine or server right and come to think of it even with this error we have the application up and running but um cannot guarantee if it is connected to the database or not so we need to be sure that it's connected to the database so let's give this solution a try eh? so to check for the process id Checking for the process ID. We are on port 5000. Okay, so this is the process ID 16363. All right, so we'll Q. Dash nine. Process ID is sixteen three six three. All right, and we use the dash nine option to make sure that the process dies immediately. Okay, so I want to believe that is done. So now let's start. Um, let's start the the node node survey again. No, oh, sorry. So we have it resolved. So now we have server running on port 5000 and database connected successfully. Okay, so let's go back to the documentation and check our progress. So the next thing we need to do is to test 
the backend code without front end. You know, we've not set up the front end using the RESTful API. So for this project, we will use Postman to test our API. Um, you are advised to install, to download and install Postman on your machine. You can click on this link to learn how to to perform the crude operation on, on Postman. I have it installed already. I have it running. So what we'll do now is to follow the instruction here. So now open your Postman, create a post request to the API um, using this URL. They request send the new tags to to-do list so the application could store it in the database. So ensure that you set your header key to context type and the value as application slash JSON. Alright. So I have I have my postman open, so I create a request. First, we have to do a post request. We advise to set the header key to content type and the value to application slash JSON. And the URL here, we to use the either the public IP address or the DNS to our server slash API slash to do. So I think I'll just I'll grab that from here. Okay slash api slash to do okay So going on to the body. Mm -hmm. So let's perform an action. Mm, just have the white screen here.
¿Sí? Click on sign. Sending. We have an error. Set us for Okay, so we have the status to be 200. Okay, so you use a double quote instead of a single quote. All right, so let's perform the get operation. Let's go back to the documentation so we create the get of um, the get request and the request will retrieve all the existing records from our to do application backend request and that So I'll just grab the URL from here. setting the header So we have a status 200 OK and we're able to get what was posted. So we're able to get what was posted. Um, we made this post and we're able to put that back up here. So, this implies that the APIs are working correctly, sending and receiving as expected. All right, so moving on to step two, the front end creation. So, since we are done with the functionality we want, we want from our back end, an API, it is time to create the user interface for a web client to interact with the application via the API. To start out, to start out with the front end of the to-do application, we will use the create react app command to scaffold our app. So in the same directory as our backend code, which is the to-do directory, 
we are to run uh, the npx command so this will create a new folder in the to do directory called the client where we will add all the react code all right so let's go back to our terminal let's clear things up a little here All right, so we are to run this command here. All right, that has created a new React app in the to-do directory and it has created its own folder which is the client so let's wait while all of this is it's being done so back to the documentation so before testing the react app there are some dependencies that are needed to be installed so we will install um, concurrently so concurrently is used to run more than one command simultaneously from the same terminal window so we will install concurrently we will install nodemon and this is used to run and monitor the server if there's any change in the server in the server code node one will restart it automatically and load the new changes so we won't need to be running the node start uh, so just checking the progress okay so let's install these dependencies i'll copy and paste the code still running so I'll pause the recording and continue okay it's done All right. so Stop comparing here. This is done perfectly. Then we install the node mode. So, why that is going on? So, we need to open the package.json file and change the highlighted part of the below screenshot and replace with the code below 
so we have to open the package.json file and replace this part which reads scripts um, the test which echoes this and replace it with this right so i just copy this have it in my clipboard let's check if this is done okay that is done perfectly um check the file and open open the package.json file okay so we are to remove this line remove this line and this line So here we we'll have this. So just to keep things neat and little. All right. So save the file and quit. So now we'll configure proxy in the package dot JSON file. Uh, configuring the proxy. We'll go to the to the client. Remember, we we have the client folder here, so we'll cd to clients. Let's see the files in there. Okay, so we have open it up. Alright, so we have the package the JSON file open up. Then we'll add the the key value pair in this the proxy. Add to this. Save this right, right, and quit just to show every day. Okay, so the whole purpose of adding the project configuration and the step um, above is to make it possible to access the application directly from the browser by simply calling the server URL um, rather than always including the entire part like the slash API slash to do. Now ensure you're inside the to do directly directory and simply do npn run dev. Okay, so let's see the back step npm okay 
So we have this row in the number. Okay, starting with seven. So now we should be able to assess this on port 3000 in the local host. But before we can assess it over the internet, we need to go back to our EC2 instance and add port 3000 to the inbound rules. Let's wait while this open up. So we can assess it locally here, or we assess it over in network using this URL. But first, we need to ensure that it is open. Internet is a little bit slow. So I'll just add a three thousand to so this applies immediately This is the no. That's the private IP address. So. Let's use the public IP address. All right. So with the public IP address. Yeah. Okay. So we have the app up and running. So the next thing to do is creating the React component. So one of the advantages of React is that it makes use of components which are reusable and also make code modular. For our to-do app, there will be two stateful components and one stateless component from your to-do directory run. So let's change directories as indicated in the documentation. Just open up another terminal. CD to do CD SRC Oh, sorry to CD to client first CD to do CD 
find going to SRC. So make a directory component okay so I'll save into component now inside the inside the component directory we have to create three files input.js, list to do.js, and, and to do.js. So touch imputs.js, list to do. By js and to do by js so let's check our files okay so that is done so we have to open the input.js file and copy and paste the following code into it So copy this code properly without leaving out any part. So this is going into input.js. So that is done. So to make use of ashes, which is the promised HTTP for HTTP client for the browser and Node.js, we need to cd into into the client from the terminal around the yarn at ashes or npm install. So we can can read more about that about ashes. Okay, so so we're in the client folder here we'll install So what it is installing, let's read ahead. So next we to go to component directory and populate the list list to do the JS file. Okay. So CDSRC slash Components. So in the components, there's a key. We have 
So VA needs to do populate it with what we have here. Okay. Then we open the to do the JS file and populate it with this. to check okay so here we need to make a little adjustment to our react code we'll delete the logo and adjust our api our app.js to look like what's here so we'll cd to to the src folder let's go back a step now we open the app app.js file we'll remove the code and paste what we have here. No. Doesn't want to have this somewhere. So that's me just trying to create a backup just to have it safe. Right and quit. Mm-hmm. Thank you. 
two we will see the editor we we'll open app dot css and paste the following code so we are in app dot css Save the file. Save the file. So we're almost done. So next is to edit the index.css. Yeah, so we have index.css. and quit but now let's return to the to do directory so now we run the application once again that's going to run So I'll just refresh the page. So this contain working on project three that we added from the postman. So we have it. We have our application running. So completing. three so that's added and 
so let's check if there's still anything to do so congratulations we've been able to implement project 3 hosting it and having the application running we have added some tags so let's see if we can remove the tags yes so if you click on it to delete so project 3 completed thank you